And again, a very good Sunday morning. Thanks for joining us here on Inside the Valley. As I said a little earlier, we've got a great show in store for you today with a lot of very important information to talk about. First on the show, we've got some experts here from DHR talking about colorectal cancer awareness month. Of course, as you know, month uh, March, excuse me, is colorectal cancer awareness month. Talk a little bit more about colon cancer. We've got two professionals here. We've got Dr. Carlos Cardenas and Pam Garcia. Thank you so much for being here. Great to be here. So uh, obviously March, we are in March right now, Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this month here and why it's so important. Well, colorectal cancer is a completely preventable disease. If you get the proper screening, it can save your life. We can not have to deal with colon, colon cancer. Now, what are, what are some of the signs and symptoms? Well, some of the symptoms are, let me, let me say this. The most common symptom of colorectal cancer is no symptom at all. Okay. It can be asymptomatic. Wow. So, I mean, when should you go and get screened? You should go to get screened at age 50. Beginning at age 50 is when you should do it. Okay. Uh, let me say this, though. that If there's somebody in your family who's had a colon cancer, let's say, that, for example, that that person was found to have a colon cancer at age 50. Okay. Then the other members of that family, first-degree family members, that means um, siblings and children, they should begin with their screenings probably at age 40. Okay. So if you were 50 when they found your cancer, you should begin your screening at age 40 if there's a family member who's had a cancer, usually 10 years before the time that they were found to have their cancer. So this cancer is hereditary, would you say? Or? Well, it can be. Okay. It, it can be, it can run in families. Uh, and there are, there are some genetic forms of, of, of colon cancer uh, but it is important to know that if there's a family member who's had it or a family member who's had polyps, that mm -hmm. those members in that family are at higher risk and should be screened. Now, you said you should go get screened when you're 50. Um, are there any, you know, uh, rectal bleeding? I mean, that obviously isn't something that's good. Right. Um, if that happens earlier than 50, should you get screened beforehand? Absolutely. Okay. There are very few you know, truths in medicine, let me say, mm -hmm. absolute truths. One of the absolute truths in medicine is that rectal bleeding is never, ever normal. Right. Lots of benign causes for it, but it's not the benign causes we worry about. Sometimes it's the only warning sign that might show up for a colon cancer. Now, Pam, let's talk real quickly here about some of the statistics. Uh, more specifically, this year, estimated deaths, because I know uh, colon cancer um, is, is bigger amongst males than it is females. Is that correct? For males, it's the second leading cause of deaths. Right. Yes. What are the estimated deaths this year uh, total? For combined, it's 50,000 for this year. 50,000. Yes. And how about new cases? New cases, the American Cancer Society has estimated approximately 135,000 cases. Now, to me, I would think that these cases, it sounds like a lot. But when you consider the entire nation as a whole, is, is this a big number or has it been pretty steady through the past It has years? improved from previous years. Okay. Uh, it does show that preventative screenings like a colonoscopy can mm -hmm. detect and prevent colon cancer. So the numbers have improved, improved throughout the years. Now for women, because we'll, women can also get colon cancer, mm -hmm. uh, are the numbers a little bit lower with women or? It's a little bit lower compared to men. Mm -hmm. For women, it's a third leading cause of cancer. Okay. Compared to men, it's a second. It's a second, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Cardinal, why, why is it that, that males are more prone to having colon cancer? Well, I don't know that we've really elucidated why that is. Mm -hmm. um, there are some risk factors that I think need to be taken into consideration. Uh, one is that um, you need to get in to get screened. Right. Uh, men, in general, oftentimes have a harder time coming to the physician uh, and, and, and getting medical care uh, as a gender uh, compared to women. Right. And so I think that that may be a factor. Uh, mm -hmm. Additionally, um, there are, for example, breast cancer. If, if breast cancer, uh, if a woman has breast cancer, her chance of having a colon cancer is higher. Okay. And so that group of women should be screened uh, for uh, colon cancer as well. Also, if there's a history of uterine cancer, mm -hmm. they should also be screened because they are also at higher risk for developing uh, colon cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you about, uh, uh, th this sounds a little bit weird, but food. Can food be uh, a attributing factor? The, what kind of food you eat, your diet, your nutrition, could that be an attributing factor to colon cancer? Sure, I mean, you've heard the old adage, you are what you eat. Right. Uh, certainly, I think that diet plays a role. Uh, for example, 
uh, we know that there are lower rates of colon cancer, colon polyps, and other intestinal problems in those populations that eat more fiber, okay. fruits, vegetables, and cereals, compared to populations that don't eat as much. So a high fiber diet, uh, a diet rich in uh, fiber, fruits, vegetables, and cereals is a healthier uh, you know, diet to eat than one that is you know, short of those things. Now, um, we were talking a little bit earlier, and we mentioned that maybe Hispanics need to get checked out a little bit early b before the age of 50. Is that correct? Well, there's a trend that we're beginning to see, and, and this has not, again, been set in stone yet, but we're beginning to see that there may be, uh, we may need to revisit the age at which we should begin screening, and particularly in Hispanics. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the American Cancer Society recommends screening at age 50. Uh, they may lower that rate or may lower the age to 45 in Hispanics, but that's not been official, has not officially happened yet. Right. So still, again, if, if, if you notice anything that's uh, uh, different, uh, rectal bleeding, anything like that, you should definitely go and get checked out. Uh, as you, you've got a motto that you say, that's, what, what was it again? Don't die of embarrassment. Right. Uh, embarrassment is a dumb thing to die from. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, I know nobody likes to be checked down there. Right. But the truth is that if you, if you don't look in the toilet, you don't know whether or not you're passing blood. Mm -hmm. If you don't uh, keep track of how often you're having a bowel movement, mm -hmm. if you have a change in bowel habit, you should get checked. These are all signs that something could be amiss. Right. And so it's important to get checked. And, and this month is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. I'm wearing blue today. Mm -hmm. Uh, because blue is the color for colorectal cancer prevention. Yep. And uh, I think it's just uh, something to bring into the consciousness that this is a preventable disease. If we act judiciously and pay attention to what our, the messages our body sends us mm -hmm. and get checked in time, it can save your life. Absolutely. Some good pointers there. Uh, folks, don't go anywhere on this Sunday morning because when we come back, we're going to be talking with Pam again and Dr. Cardenas. We'll also introduce you to a survivor. Don't go anywhere.